And this is in my crosshairs, Conversations with Karl Niels. Here I will talk about my own views and also interview thought leaders and political players throughout our country and internationally. You as viewers are invited to participate, to share with each other, to invite other viewers, to register, and of course, all important, hit that notification bell so that you always part of this important conversation and engagement on our revolutionary journey for a more just and radically transformed South Africa. This bong was your Kalni house. Bagazita, I'm so proud of Bezit. In your name, so proud of Jengilanda. He pull up my pillows, I'm as a mum shaba. He can't yamba. He deserves to be surrounded by us. monopoly capital is long and short. Baba Lego no one could resist. He could build a shop at Great Babasoni na. Him turn the lap at Mahashu na Ghana Kala. Him turn the lap at Fifa na Malala. Him turn the lap at Umnoto na Mshaba Finele de Zaden Zabatabam Nyama. Him shop at Kwaunda Bezita. Him turn the Wokusa no Kutaza. Irradical economic transformation wanga Kibala. Kali House ma Philippines yenge soja. Umaga de Bona. The Holy Bushel is hunger. Amas Gatama Kunuba Rulula Balega Mimbona. Umbulali. Wabulale apartheid na maswi. Umtaka tu indaba. Walo muso wa njululu kati South Africa ya bagu indemokrasi. Ispame skumil tuli hausi. Matuiza nyusirili. Ono ndaba batlega bafa itzini. Kuma kwa landini. Lagi ofeo kwa nukonte sizo gyo kumizu. Good morning. This is the morning of the 16th of June. And 46 years ago, the youth of South Africa rose up against apartheid, against the repression that they were faced with, against the enforcement of Afrikaans as a repressive language of instruction and education. June the 16th, 1976, was indeed a watershed day and period in the liberation struggle history of South Africa. Here on Mpagazita in conversation, we are this morning talking to four fellow comrades, all of whom have their own experiences, even when they were young, of the impact of June the 16th, 1976, on their lives and their hopes. I've got Comrade Mervyn Dirks, a member of parliament, well-known member of parliament, who have expressed himself very clearly in terms of our accountability in our parliament. A comrade of courage who speaks his mind. I've got Comrade Spoo Mtize from the Moses Mabida region of the ANC Youth League Regional Task Team. He will give us a perspective of what the experiences are within his own region and also within the province of KwaZulu Natal. And then the fourth person that participates with us this morning is Comrade Penwo Maduna, Youth League spokesperson in Johannesburg region. I welcome all of these comrades. Yes, it is June the 16th again. And I heard yesterday that there were some people who said, we don't know how to celebrate June the 16th anymore. We're not sure that the youth of South Africa have anything to celebrate. Now, comments like that are disturbing and sad. Yeah. Comments like that indicate, I think, to a very considerable extent, the quagmire that our political environment finds itself at this stage. People are scared. People are fearful of the future. Many young people, the large number of those who are unemployed, 
hardly see any light at the end of the tunnel. But there are also many who have hope. There are also those who say, despite everything, we are better off than what those young people, those courageous young people were of. I'm now going to go over to Comrade Mervyn Dirks. Next to me, he is the oldest comrade in this conversation. And Mervyn, I want you to give us a overview of how June 1976 influenced you and how it played through in your own political life and the political work that we, you were doing, also the community political work that you so well known for. Mervyn. Uh, th thank you, uh, Comrade Carl and all the other guests. I think because of time we will have to, I'll just be very, very brief, but I'll try and push as much as possible into what, uh, what I need to reply to. Yeah, see, um, June, 19, June 1976, uh, I was very, very young. Uh, we, I grew up in a, in a small rural village in the east. In the, Sorry to in the interrupt village. you, Mervyn. How, how old were you in 76? I want to no, I establish, I I want to establish my no, seniority no. over you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll explain to me. I'll just okay. take you to, to, to I'll come into that. Uh, June, uh, June 1976, I was uh, very, very young. Uh, I grew up in a small uh, rural village in the former Transkai, the homeland of Trans Transkai. So in seven, 1976, I was very, very young, but uh, because of the, the environment that we grew up in the, in the, in the former, former, former Transkai, uh, we, I was politically conscious in a way at a very, very young age. I was politically conscious at a very, very young age. Uh, I can remember that we used to, before 1976, we used to buy the, the world, the world the world um, the, uh, newspaper it was later on it was banned we used to walk three kilometers to the shop we were very very poor when we grew up walk three kilometers to a shop scrape our cents up some uh, myself and a few friends we go and buy the world newspaper and we used to read the world newspaper we used to read the tram so it was very we were very very well informed of the situation what was going on in the country at a very young age and we also had opportunity those years because we had those old radios and they could pick up Radio Freedom from Lusaka. The radio with like lamps at the back. And this radio could pick up Radio Lusaka where we are living. No Radio Freedom in Lusaka. And we used to listen to Radio Freedom from Lusaka. We used to listen, uh, read the drum, the, the world newspaper until it was, until it was banned. I was only 12 years old at the age. And in 1976, I was only 12 years old. But I was politically conscious uh, conscience i was politically already well educated pol politically but where the big thing happened for me in in, in june in june in 1976 as when the 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 the, 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 the riots started in johannesburg and the june 16 riots in in in, in soweto what happened thereafter many of the students fled from Soweto. Some skipped the country, some fled into the Transkai. And many, many high school students, they fled into this rural town where I lived in the, in the, in, in the former Transkai. And they, there was a high school and there was a primary school. Uh, I was doing standard five at the time in the, in the primary school and there was a high school. So they came to the high school because we are one community, African people and colored people all live together. Uh, we all live in mud houses in this rural village. There was no segregation. So these guys, we fled from the from Soweto. They came into into this rural village where where, where I live, and they brought a wealth of political knowledge with them. And that's where the real interaction of my mind started with these guys when I came to 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 the village where where, where I live. And from there, it was just politics one way until where I am today. Thank you. Thanks, Mervyn. And can you perhaps give us an idea of how? What happened in 76 and the mobilization of the large numbers of young people, how it changed the character of the liberation struggle. Because remember what Comrade Oa Tambo was saying, that we need to develop the internal machinery. Uh, we had a whole process that became very different from the liberation struggle that we conducted before that very seminal event of 1976. 
Yeah, the, 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 I think 1976 was the whole turning turning point where young people were, uh, because of the education, the whole thing started because of the educational system, marching for uh, for uh, for free, uh, for equal education. And thereafter, what happened thereafter when the police uh, opened fire on the on the students, everything changed, changed after that. Uh, the young people became very, very rad radicalized. Young people then were prepared to leave the country and join them, come to West Seas, where even the ones that came to, to, to where we live in the Transkei, it was just a temporary stop for them. From there, many of them move out of the country to go join them, um, come to West Seas. So actually that event, June 76, was a turning point where the ranks, I believe that the ranks of Mkonto was were flooded with young people. People started leaving the country in droves in their hundreds, maybe in their thousands, to go join um, Mkonto West Seas. And also on the ground, what happened? Mass mobilization started taking place on the, on the, on, on, on the ground. There's a lot of educational work, mass mobilization on the ground that what happened was, you must understand, the MK guys, with, when they came, came into our communities, they didn't just come and plant, just plant bombs and all that. They were also doing mass mobilization. So preparing the ground for them, for when they come back, others come back in the country, the communities must accept these cadres, these uh, trained uh, um, controversy the soldiers. So they were preparing and laying the groundwork for communities to accept trained soldiers of um, controversy. They must be able to come into the community, jail in the community, and become part of the, of, of, the, of the community. So a lot of political education and mass mobilization took place where people's minds sh shifted. And uh, it was really a, 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 a paradigm shift. June 7, 1970. Comrades, I want to come over to you and ask you, in terms of your experience of what June the 16th means for you as a young activist and a member of the ANC Youth League, how do you experience it and do you feel that the hopes that those students had when they sacrificed their lives, when they were out in the streets, so many of them died, that those hopes are now, 46 years later, actually being fulfilled? Or how do you feel about the experience that you, as a young person in South Africa, have at this stage? Also the political experience that you have within the African National Congress. Comrades, my name is Busi Somkeze uh, from uh, what 18 in Nazisma Peter region. Uh, in terms of the the great job that uh, has been done by our for, for former youth leaders in terms of uh, shaping the country, uh, I strongly believe that uh, we have not really uh achieved uh, we are facing challenges of unemployment and the poverty in our region uh, youth unemployment has reached a crisis portion in most Mapeda region there is a higher rate of drop of dropouts uh, and in inadequate uh, uh, framework that talk to young people uh, in Moses Mapeda the there is a higher rate of violence and abuse uh, of drugs, there's a lack of accessing sports uh, facilities. Uh, disabilities of young people uh, are not being serviced uh, or are underserved in, in our region. So there is a lack of career exhibition, exhibition centers where young people can be taken uh, to those uh, exhibition careers so that they can uh, early uh, see which courses that they can do in tertiary school, uh, courses that uh, will help the region to grow unemployment, uh, to, 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 to decrease unemployment, un unemployment rates, and also uh, grow the economy so that we have uh, more young people uh, in the job market. Uh, there is no access to multi-purpose centers, so the 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 the, 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 the reality or the progress of uh, of uh, of young people in our region 
is 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 growing at a very at a very uh, low uh, pace uh, in such a way that uh, young people uh, are not participating in the reforms uh, in some some of uh, our local uh, sub regions or municipalities uh, at the rural areas the young people there they can't access wi-fi network they can't uh, even apply online so those are challenges that uh, we are facing as young people uh, in Peter Marisbeck. Uh, young people are not part participating fully in the economic mainstream. Uh, uh, some of them, they are unable to further their, stu their studies because uh, there is no funding uh, in order for them to continue with, uh, with, their, study, with their studies. Uh, uh, young people are being used by elders, of which is the ANC, uh, for their politically uh, uh, political scoring. Uh, there are no uh, deployment of young people. Uh, we have seven. Uh, we have seven uh, municipalities, but there is no one municipality that put uh, a youth uh, directorate or youth officers. Uh, this is the challenges. Th th these are, chal are challenges that we are facing as young people uh, in Moses Mapeda. Uh, uh, we, we feel as if uh, 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 June 16, it doesn't really uh, mean something to us uh, because uh, even if there are events, uh, the, the, the government of the day, uh, what uh, is doing is to do th 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 those kind of events just to take the post and uh, give their their colonies the tenders, but the, the the large portion of young people are not benefiting. Only those who are connected with the certain people who are in charge of uh, it could be government or 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 or, or, or the, the the ANC at, at some point. Uh, uh, as we speak, we have challenges here, uh, political challenges uh, in terms of the in terms of the uh, NYTT roadmap. Uh, we were we, we supposed to be having a structure of the ANC, but there is no structure because some certain individual um, individuals in the ANC they are the one who are determining who are determining who must um, uh, get. Uh, the, the chairpersonship or secretary. So we are having a, a very difficult uh, experience uh, as young people in 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 in, uh, in, in Moses Mapeta region. Uh, thank you, comrades. Yeah, comrades, Fu, what you described to us is actually quite disturbing, because what you are saying is that the hardships and the struggle that those young people from 1976 and over the decades, also those who left the country, went into exile, joined the ANC and Mkontu Isizwe, that we do not see the fruits of those hardships. I think one of the things that really disturbed me is when you say that you feel that young people are being used by the older comrades in the African National Congress to fight our factional political battles. And I think what I've seen over the years is a proud movement, the African National Congress Youth League, being destroyed by those factional battles that are primarily fought out as the reign of fighting and struggle of the Youth League by older people. Uh, Comrade Mervyn, do you want to perhaps uh, come in and comment on those comments that I've made? Yeah, yeah. No, I I'll just want to take off, uh, pick up from where uh, Comrade Bu have uh, left off. I think Comrade Bu is very, very correct. Uh, obviously, obviously, I cannot speak on, on behalf of the youth, but uh, what my observations are, uh, I think it's, that it's in line with what Comrade Bu have said here. What I see currently in this country, there is a, a dark cloud hanging over the youth of this country. This, the youth of this country, as things are standing currently, have no future. There's a few connected youth that have some kind of few future, 
But the majority of the youth in this country currently have no future. Have no have no future to look uh, 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 forward to in this in this country. There's a dark cloud hanging over the youth. I'll explain to you why I'm saying that and take you from where comrades who have le- uh, left off. What we find of what the youth in our country and in our my region, the youth, the youth are unemployed. The youth are involved in drugs. The youth are pregnant. The, the youth takes all kinds of uh, substance, substances that they are that abusing. The youth drops out of, or, or out of school because not of their own making, but because of generational poverty. Generational poverty following them, following them and today they in their generational poverty and that makes them drop out of school. That's the one set of youth. Then we have the other youth that is quite fortunate or that they get an opportunity of going to university. And they get mass fast. They go to university. We have that uh, second category of youth. They go to university. They go and study. In my region, we have thousands of academics, young academics that are unemployed. We have engineers. They're not getting absorbed into government or even into the private sector. The private sector is getting huge infrastructure, governmental contracts, tenders. They get huge uh, government tenders, the private sector. They don't absorb, uh, 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 absorb engineers into, into, the, in, into their companies. The government is not doing it. Same with the social workers. So we are telling the youth, go to university. We say to the youth, go to university. They go to university, they come out, they can't find jobs. And when they get uh, jobs, I know many engineers here, young engineers at three years out of, 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 of university, what they decrease, they, some of them that are fortunate, they get uh, internship, they earn 4,000 rand. Three years out of university, with your degree, they earn 4,000 rand a month. And thereafter, when they three of interns all finish, they can't find a job. So the problem that we have in the, in the, in the, in the, in the country, the country, we're sending youth to the, to the universities, they go and study. When they come out, they sit at home with their degrees. That's the second a lot of them. The first one's unemployed. Because of generational uh, poverty, drop out, drugs, all that, that's the one. The second one is the one that goes to university, comes out, you've got, no, got no job. So what kind of youth future are we creating for the youth when we're facing this situation? And then when you come back to the African National Congress, then you find the elders in the youth, in the ANC, wanting to use the youth for their own personal battle, which is correct what Comrade Zboud is saying. And then, what, but what annoys me the most in this whole thing is that when the elders in the mother body want to dictate to the youth who must be elected onto the REC, who must be mm. REC members, who must be in the executive, want to dictate to the, to, the, to the youth. And that is the problem that I see. Obviously, I'm not speaking on behalf of the youth, but those are my observations that I have observed what is taking, currently taking place in the country when it comes come to, our, to our youth. So yes, I would agree with Comrade Bo, those things do happen. And they happen not only in the region, they happen in the province, they happen throughout the, out, out of the country. Now, if we, if we are going in this direction, what future are we uh, building for, for the youth of the country? What future are we building for them? So they, whether they doom, when if they, they are doomed, you doomed, when you go, don't go and study, and you still doomed even when you study. So either way, you are doomed. Studying or, st- or not studying, you are doomed as a youth in this country, yeah. because we are not creating any opportunities for you. That boils back. That boils back to how we deal with our economy, the lack of restructuring in our economy, the continuation of a small privileged class that continues to control this economy, and the fact that young black students and also young black graduates are just not given opportunities and the fact of the matter is regardless of what so many of these young white uh, students are saying they are far better off and their chances of employment are many times better than what black and especially african youth in south africa are faced with comrade penel uh, can you hear us i know you were having a Hard time to hear us. I would like you to come in if you can hear us. Even if we don't have your picture, then we can use the audio. Penel? No, I don't think Comrade Penwell is able to come in. Comrade Spool, I want to come back to you and ask you, 
yes, we have all of these challenges. And obviously, it looks as if there is a future that is without perspective for the youth. What do you think we should do? What should be done? Not for the youth, but with the youth in order to address some of these problems. What are the challenges that we can actually effectively address? Well, uh, I think uh, what should be done uh, uh, first and foremost is to try and do a sort of um, youth summit uh, where we invite uh, public sector and private sector uh, with uh, a view uh, to to provide uh, uh, to, 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 to provide uh, business opportunities where young people can um, can, uh, can, can can make money or, or can uh, uh, or, or can employ others uh, uh, to uh, uh, not just a youth summit but uh, those those summits must be monitored uh, and 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 the, and the evolution must be done thoroughly because what one has experienced is that um, uh, at some point, government do uh, does this thing of a youth summit or a youth workshop. But uh, when you drill down to check uh, whatever was uh, presented or was agreed upon, does um, does it help the young people? The answer is no. Uh, what they do, they just do it uh, for the sake of ticking the box uh, too. What uh, I think we should do is to is to provide uh, politically consciousness uh, in such a way that uh, we invite people like uh, Abu Kumbit Navin Dix, people like Abu Kal, uh, people uh, like Abu former uh, President Jacob Zuma uh, to do political um, uh, political uh, uh, lecturers uh, so that. Um, Young people can, uh, can 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 be in a better position to 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 to, to get a a, 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 thorough, a background on what uh, was the main aim of a youth league in the ANC uh, because what one has uh, observed uh, currently is that um, the elders they when they do politically lecturers, they only just do it uh, when the conferences of the ANC uh, are near or, or when they want to or, 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 or when or, or when they want to do uh, political grandstanding uh, with uh, to, 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 to other to 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 to, to under comrades or discredit other comrades of which is wrong another thing what i think we should do uh, together with uh, a comrades and uh, maybe the insulate government is to ensure that um, uh, youth uh, programs uh, are being implemented one two uh, are being monitored to check uh, whether they did um, serve uh, what uh, uh, is intending to or the purpose of their program uh, like uh, uh, where I work, uh, we've got a youth directorate, but the youth directorate function only on the sixth, on the sixteenth of June uh, for 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 June sixteen event. But the challenge is, the, 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 but the, the question is that challenges of young people are not stopped at uh, uh, or at uh, are not stopped on sixteen June, but it's a continuous but our, 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 our continuation challenges, yeah, which um, we, uh, which I think uh, uh, we need to have a proper program that will address those issues. We need so, some sort of uh, uh, skill development, uh, training, uh, uh, awarenesses, uh, uh, try to we must try to make sure that we 
we we have access to NYDA because NYDA one of the purpose uh, one of the main objective of NYDA was to ensure that a uh, young people uh, are being catered for, young people are being assisted mm. in terms of uh, business opportunities or uh, their careers. Uh, but uh, uh, lastly, before uh, maybe I, I learned, uh, I think uh, government is not doing enough uh, to assist young people uh, in terms of the, of the, of the statistics. Uh, we are the one uh, who who've got a, a large population, uh, but the very same youth is the one that uh, makes sure that when there are elections of NC state government, uh, they we are always on the ground trying to convince people to go and vote for NC. But there is no department that is catered for young people. Uh, that department, I think, uh, it should be. I think now is the is the high time for ANC that government to 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 have a department that will deal with issues of young people. Yes, we acknowledge and we appreciate the the department of of, of youth and this youth women and disability and those uh, living with a disability. But it's not enough. We need a, a single department that will uh, that, 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 that will advance the interest of young people uh, and. The, uh, that department must be led by young blood because uh, some of the of the problems that we have uh, is that even if government try to do some things for young people, but it's not owned by young people; it's owned by elders. Uh, 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 which I think uh, where I'm sitting, uh, it is not uh, uh, what it's supposed to be. Uh, if we want to attract or if we want to make sure that we encourage uh, young people, we must uh, make sure that we deploy young people in strategic position uh, so that even those who have given up or who have uh, lost the hope, uh, they can be inspired and they can be attracted to, 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 to say, no, guys, let's uh, pick up this PM. This thing is working. But they will not be interested if uh, we are being... Uh, 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 in fact, uh, uh, we, we are being uh, uh, infected by elders of the ANC-led government. Thank you. Yeah, I think one of the issues Comrade Mervyn and I spoke about the last time we were together in Peter Maritzburg was the challenge to bring youth in and to have youth also taking leadership positions while at the same time not being anti the older generation within the african national congress and it is a careful balance that needs to be struck i fear that at the moment we don't strike that balance we do not have enough young people in the leadership positions of the African National Congress. And I'm sorry to say, those young people who seems to have been elevated to positions of leadership within the ANC National Executive Committee, and especially in cabinet, are failing us. And I don't think they necessarily, the youngsters or young people who can give the lead. I don't believe that Fikile Mbalula or even our Minister of Justice, Lamola, is giving us the kind of leadership that young people are looking up to. So it is a balance that we need to try and strike. And at the same time, it is also the challenge that we are faced with to prevent us as older people from trying to make young people in Afrikaans, ons handlangers, to take them along with us to fight our factional battles. And I'm glad to hear that sometimes young people stand up and say, hey, Connor guys, we do not want to fight the factional battles that you are fighting because you are carrying baggage on your shoulders that we even don't know about. We haven't been even there when these things started festering. So it is that challenge of how do we bring a new generation into our politics in a way that will empower young people 
and doesn't reflect a situation of using and abusing young people. I see we've lost Comrade Penwo Maduna, so unfortunately he will not be able to share his wisdom with us. But I want to come back to uh, Comrade Mervyn and hear what your comments are about that. And then Mervyn, while, while I've got you coming in, today the president is having a National Youth League rally in Umtata and the Transkai. And I hear that the National Security Department, which is now centralized in his office, have been elevating that rally to a level A1 security operation, which means that the president is scared of his own young people. They're even bringing in systems today that were used in the World Cup, where you have televisions that do face recognition, you identify immediately anyone in the crowd that you may think is rowdy, you identify directly to the police records, whether they have a criminal record, what their history is, so that you can intimidate them and take them out. Which means that we are now treating our youth as a danger. And this is for me a very unsettling thing because the issues that the youth raise, the kind of issues that Comrade Spoo is raising are very relevant. And Comrade Spoo is raising those issues, I believe, in the same way that those young people who would like to go to the national rally in Umtata would like to raise. And perhaps they want to say, we don't understand how we live in poverty, how we are in destitution, how there's no jobs, while we have a president that has four million United States dollars stuffed in his mattresses and couches at his private residence. So if we want to raise those questions as a country and especially as a young people in South Africa, it's being treated as a security operation that needs to be oppressed, that needs to be repressed. Comrade Mervyn. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Comrade Carl. Comrade Carl, let me just start off firstly by saying that uh, addressing this issue about youth unemployment in the country. Firstly, I think the problem lies with our educational system. Our educational system does not prepare youth, the youth for the job markets in South Africa, does not prepare the youth for the future. Uh, I think there's a major problem in our educational system. But unfortunately, the education system has been run by for quite some time by communists, and the communists could not pick up such things. That uh, this educational system needs an overhaul. The educational system must be geared up to what, what, where are we taking South Africa to, and how we want to prepare people in our educational system for uh, uh, becoming future productive citizens. So I think, firstly, the educational system is a, is a major pro uh, uh, pro pro problem. We as government we invest billions of rands in infrastructure development. And yet we have a, uh, we have a, a skills shortage in the in the country. When we built Matupi and Kusile, we brought in about 6, 16,000 welders from Taiwan. We brought in 16,000 welders from Taiwan because we did not have. Now, we must understand, we must not, our educational system cannot want to try and prepare, prepare everybody to go to university. At some time when you go to high school, the education system needs to change to prepare people for different fields that they need to go into and where we have to take this country to. Can't prepare everybody to go to university. Everybody can't go to you know, univers university. Mm -hmm. uh, in South Africa, our youth at school, they don't even, they, when they come out of school, they do not even know how to fix a cell phone. Uh, technology, we think we're in the fourth, we are, we're in the fourth uh, uh, industrial revolution and uh, we're not even teaching our kids at school how to fix a cell, uh, a cell phone. I've seen a program in, 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 in Nigeria when uh, during COVID, when schools closed, many of, the school, many of those youngsters, when they were not at school, they went to go to open shops and they're fixing cell phones. And when schools opened, they didn't have to go back to school because they had the skill already. <laughs> So, so we need to prepare. We need to prepare our 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 young people educationally 
for to be productive in society in society and everybody cannot go to university in this country we need artisans we need artisans like nobody's but we need welders boiler makers pipe fitters uh, electricians uh, carpenters bricklayers plumbers that's what we need and we have a shortage of it now we need to re focus our way to education and i want to make this suggestion you see we have this thing of sitas where we spend a lot, we spend billions of rents in sitas, and but most mm. of that money goes into the pockets of tender, of tender entrepreneurs because we give comp, uh, tender entrepreneurs companies to say go and uh, give our young people three weeks courses in plumbing, three weeks courses in electrician, electrical, electric, electricity to become electricians, and after three weeks they know, they basically know nothing, and the bulk of that money goes to individuals which become super rich in this in this country. I think we must reprioritize where our focus should be. The CITAS money, instead of what our government is currently doing, wanting to privatize uh, uh, ESCOM, wanting to privatize railways, whatever, CITAS money must be redirected to these uh, SOEs. We must pump the CITAS monies into the SOEs. Because it is the SOEs that must drive skills development in this country. Like it happened in the past, how the Afrikaner was empowered in this country. We need to employ electric, uh, artisans, electrical artisans at ESCOM in their thousands. And CITAS must be used to do that kind of kind of, kind of thing. We need to re uh, rechannel this, uh, this funding to these SOEs. And these SOEs, the railways and uh, ESCOM, wherever, needs to employ young people in this country. We can employ thousands and thousands of young people and skill them that they serve three years apprenticeships, they come out there, they qualify, they can go anywhere in the world. With that Red Sea, we can go anywhere in the world to, to, to work. And that's what we need to do. Also, CITAS must go to the military because we must let young people go to the military because the military also teach you how to be a, a diesel mechanic, artisanship in diesel mechanic, whatever trade you think of. And that's what we need to do in this country. We can't put billions of rents in infrastructure development, and yet we are not training. Uh, we are not training skills artisans in this country. So I think the focus of our education is currently wrong. We need to really look at it, and we need to re look at how we're going to re-budget money, where money money should should go to. As far as the education is concerned, Come back if I can, board, if uh, I can budge in there, perhaps we should get more young people also to participate in the decisions in our education system. Than, yes, they know rather that. than old, rather than old magogos, uh, yes. you know who I refer to, our Minister of Education, yes. without any creativity, just continuing yes. like on a treadmill, continuing with a system that to a very large extent has been inherited from the past. Yes. And what you are yes. talking about is creative thinking outside the box. Yeah, many young people I've spoken to, they tell me that, hey, whatever they've been, what they've been taught at school until grade 12, uh, there's of no use to them now that they're out of school. Now you speak mm. to a youngster from Nigeria that comes out, they finished uh, grade, uh, grade 12. Uh, what they have been taught at school, he'll come to South Africa and he'll open a, a, a cell phone shop and he'll repair my cell phone. And our kid mm. come out there, the education we gave him at school is of no value to him when he's out of school. And yeah, many young people are telling me they're not finding the education that they receive at school useful for, for their adult life when in order to be productive in, in society. So I think there must be a refocus on edu education. Uh, there must be a refocus on, on where we spend, 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 spend money. And I think the SOEs is one of the critical uh, uh, state-owned entities that we must use to 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 skill our young people and instead of wanting to privatize it we must use it to skill young people we must pump the monies from the sitters into the into these SOEs but and, also to, people, jobs, eh? and also, also to create jobs and also to create jobs our SOEs jobs. must be job creators you yes, know uh, just jobs. as a as a quick intervention my father mm. came from a very very poor family mm. and his mother passed on when he was uh, 13 years old. So mm -hmm. when he reached the level of what was standard eight, he left school. Mm -hmm. But he went to the railways. Mm -hmm. The railways put him on a four-year artisanship. Mm -hmm. He became a highly skilled fitter and turner. Yes. 
And they guaranteed, after he went through that period and got his uh, certificate as a fitter and turner, they guaranteed, guaranteed him employment. Mm -hmm. So my family is an example of how state-owned enterprises can be used to lift people out of poverty. My family was working class poor. By the time mm. that I was born, I think we could be classified as middle class white South Africans. Yes. And that was because of the direct intervention of the state through state owned yes. enterprises. Uh, my apologies, I interrupted you. You wanted to go to the next part of what you wanted to say. No, you, you correct, Carl, because it's not only just going to create employment. Uh, 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 the state or the SOEs does not only just create employ employment, it also skills our society. Young people become highly skilled, where they can work anywhere in the world, Russia, anywhere they can work in the world with, it, with its, uh, that skill. And at further, it also builds the SOE. Once we have... Uh, you know, once you have employed artisan electricians at, at ESCOM, where by the time those people, some of them stay forever there, and they are so yeah. highly skilled, they know exactly what is wrong uh, when anything is wrong on that on 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 plan. But instead, what we want to do, we want to distribute tenders from these SOEs, and a certain group of people are eating these, uh, these, uh, these, these, these tenders and destroying SOEs. SOEs must never, never be privatized. That is our vehicle, this vehicle as government that we will use to, um, to create skills in this country, to build our economy, to build our 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 our, our human resource in this, this country. So uh, it's, a, it's a critical role to play, SOEs. Very, very critical role. And with the direction that the, my, our government is taking currently, I cannot agree with it. I cannot agree with it. Because I know what we can do with those SOEs. Because I've seen what it has done in the past. If, it's that, if mm -hmm. government have the will and the courage to intervene in, in, in them, in order to lift our young people out of uh, unemployment. And young people are not even have to go to, this thing is a, the fallacy of you must go to the three. Young people from the standard, from the, what you call standard eight or grade eight, uh, from uh, grade eight, from there, the young person must already know which career party wants to be in. I want to be a highly qualified electrician and they have to work anywhere in the world. So standard eight, I move in this direction. But we have this mentality, this. I don't know this model of you must go to matric and you come out of there, you don't even get a, a, a pass rate that will can put you in university, that education becomes useless to you, you sit at home a few years, you forgot what you've been taught at, 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 at school, and it just makes you a useless citizen. So education in this country must, we must look at education. And when we have the summit, we have the summit that has complete who is saying that must, must call all the uh, role players, we must call the, the, the student bodies, and they must come, even uh, the Sasso and Elmer, they must come and we must discuss this issue. We must transform education in this, in this country. We cannot continue on the same educational system that we have. It must be changed. It must be changed if we want to really build this economy and if we want to build human, our human resource in this country and if we want to skill our nation, then we have to change the educational system in the country. That's what we have to do. Now, coming back to the last issue of the issue about the president going tomorrow to, uh, to, uh, to that uh, place, I mean, it's very Jum difficult. Jum Tata is very difficult for any for any leader in this country to go and speak to the youth. Because what are you going to tell the youth? What are you going to tell the youth? The youth have a dark cloud hanging over their heads. The youth is frustrated. The youth is living in the in the. I will say not even informal schedule. They're living in in ten shanties in squatter camps. The youth is unemployment. The youth have fallen into drugs out of despair. The youth is deep in poverty and in, in, in poverty. And we as leaders are not creating any light for the youth at the end. The youth can say that the light at the end of the tunnel. So when you go to the youth, what will any leader say to the youth when you go to the youth now? And we will even find it difficult to come, come and call and speak to the youth. They'll say, you were there all along, whatever you've done. So it's very, very difficult for any of leader to go and speak to the youth currently because we have failed the youth. But what makes it worse for the president to go there? Is this very same youth that is going to address it in poverty have seen on on national tv has seen in the newspapers the whole country what do we like about the whole country is talking about the 64 million rent under mattresses there was so much of the stuff under mattresses in cupboards and all that that's what the, the whole country knows whether it's true or, or, or not true but that is what the country knows so you're going to address the youth 
when the youth is looking, seeing that you had 64 million and, and the mattresses. So therefore, yes, I now the president understand. Now the president has to make the, these extra security me, uh, measures and then and, and, and to protect himself because the people, the youth is looking at the man that got the 64 million rand. So you have to take those measures. You have to take those measures because people are angry out there. But what does that do in the return to, to, to us? It will then, because of what now the president needs all security, it further isolate us as an organization because he's the head of our organi of the ANC. It further uh, 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 isolate us as the leader of society, the African National Congress, from the people on the on the on the ground. Because I don't think there's any youth that can will even be able to go near the, the pre president. They gone are the days where, where Mandela used to shake hands at the at the rallies at at Kogolo uh, Stadium with with the people uh, where Zuma where Zuma tense amongst the, the the young the young people. Uh, as we are moving in a direction where we are really becoming isolated from the masses on the on the on the ground because we have to bring extra security measures. And now that will alienate us from the masses on the, on, the, on the ground. And this is the problem with capital. This is the problem that capital creates. Capital is inherently corrupt. Capital creates serious problems. It is one of the problems that capitalism creates. Capital, 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 capital creates. Now we, we are isolate, We are getting isolated from the masses on the on the ground. Unfortunate, but uh, that's how it is. Uh, I hope it's a learning curve to the leadership of the of the of the of the of the, of the, of the ANC. I hope it's a and uh, uh, it's a. I hope it's a it's a it's a it's a lesson to the young people, uh, because when we elected the president, Zoom, uh, President uh, Ramaphosa, Kwete uh, Mantasha went and said that the clip is all over. So that uh, he's rich, he's got money, he cannot steal, he will not steal. Now the youth, I hope it's a lesson to you to see it, that you cannot, as a young person, send me Marvin Dutch to go and fix a system. A capitalist system that have made me a, uh, to go change the system that have made me a billionaire. If the system, this kind of system, have made me Marvin Tex uh, a billionaire, then you elect me to say Marvin Tex go and change the system that made you a made you a billionaire. I'm not going to change the system because if I must change the system, it's not going to be in my interest to change it, uh, that system system because if I change the system, that means I'm going to make less and uh, my wealth is going to is going to be reduced uh, because I have to now give off well to other other people. So you cannot send me to go and change the system that have made me a billionaire. This system made me a billionaire. So how do you expect me to go and change it? I cannot change it. That's a You're not going that's, to be changed to, to... You're not going to be sent to change the system that actually made you. You can't de-campaign yourself. Uh, you Robert, you, I, want to, I want to come to you because these two old bullies are talking a lot. Perhaps uh, we should give you, as a representative of the youth in this discussion, a response to what would you like to hear? Perhaps with hope against hope. What would you like to hear from President Ramaphosa today? That's the one question I want to ask you. And the second one is, what is the most important message if you were there in Umtata today what is the message you would like to convey to president ramaphosa about the situation where you find yourself and your fellow south african youth find themselves in no oh, thank you so much uh, comrades uh carl i i i think what i would like uh to hear or if i was a president uh I was going to one make sure that I I I put a, a hope to to the youth of South Africa, but not just a hope per se, but uh, a hope that's got a clear a program of action that aims to that aims to. To, to that, that, that aims to provide uh, amicable solutions that talk to young people. Uh, uh, President Ramaphosa must speak of programs that are relevant to young people because young people of South Africa are despondent uh, in such a way that um, 
uh, the resistance of uh, young people to go to vote for ANC uh, at the last polls tells you how much we are as young people frustrated by the ANC-led government because uh, 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 we seems uh, as if uh, we are neglected by uh, one of our own uh, uh, ANC uh, government. So uh, uh, President Ramaphosa must make sure that um, he speak he speaks of um, of of, of um, uh, programs that got a solution that will speak to issues that affecting us as young people uh, uh, as we are, are gearing up towards the the national uh, uh, conference uh, uh, of the ANC uh, I think uh, as young people we must Ed, we must make sure that we put our mark in this uh, forthcoming conference. Uh, we must deposit our one of our one of our of our young blood in the top five of the ANC because uh, one of the things that we are seeing as a problem is that um, we are feeling neglected because uh, we are not represented. There is no one at the uh, top five of the ANC who is advancing our our issues. Uh, so. I would like to, 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 to urge our current president uh, to ensure that uh, uh, this thing of uh, rhetoric and uh, empty promises is the thing of the past. Uh, so we must come up with, uh, with, 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 with um, viable programs that will speak to the youth of, um, uh, of South Africa, in particular the youth of, uh, who are living in rural areas, because uh, at some point um, those uh, young people we seem to be neglecting them we only remember them if we want them to vote or for epwp epwp it's not defining uh, it's not uh, it's, it's not a something that uh, uh, one can, uh, can, can can do to provide uh, bread on the table uh, as young people we need to be deployed in strategic position where we'll be able to make decision that will enhance uh, uh, the, 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 the young people, uh, uh, we, are, we are sick and tired by uh, uh, the, 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 the current uh, president because even the, the, the year's program that he has, uh, he has uh, implemented or he has uh, initiated in, in, in his um, uh, offices is not working. Uh, uh, it, 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 it's, a, it's just a, a ticking post uh, to grandstand where, wherever you go to a podium. Uh, uh, that, 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 that how, that's how we feel as young people. We need uh, 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 amicable uh, program solutions that will uh, speak to uh, what we normally experience on our daily basis as young people of this country. Thank you. Thanks, Comrade Spoo. I think we need to wind up. So I want to give Comrade Mervyn a chance, very short, Mervyn, to give us your last thoughts on this conversation. And again, I must express my regret that some of our other guests are not able to be here because, for example, I also wanted to have young women on this program, but unfortunately, it was not possible. And part of the reason why we're faced with this problem is the way in which this infrastructure and our economy doesn't cater for young people. One of the reasons why we do not have as representative a group in this discussion as we should have is the issue of expensive data and the poor networks that we have in South Africa. You know, the strange thing is when I talk to colleagues in the United Kingdom and in Moscow, in Russia and other countries throughout the world, I have better reception. They're more easily able to connect than what we are in South Africa. So our IT infrastructure and especially the issue around data, and it was highlighted also by the COVID-19 pandemic and the way in which our young people could not make use of online learning because of the lack of 
access to data and to IT was highlighted. Uh, so unfortunately, yes, some of the young comrades that I've invited for this conversation either have fallen out after they came into the program and were not able to stay on because of the data issues, and others of them were not even able to join because of similar problems. Uh, Comrade Mervyn, I'm handing over to you to make your concluding remarks, and uh, then I'll wrap up our discussion. Comrade Carl, um, I believe that uh, June 16, 2022, the African National Congress is in serious problems. Uh, we're going for the National Conference, and in 2024, we have to face the electorate. And uh, our own own members, besides even the voting, the, vote, the voters out there, the electorate, our own members are very disappointed in us because they failed, failed, they believe that we have failed, failed, failed them. So this is a very stressful year for us. And with all the scandals and the things that are happening within the ANC currently, does not make the situation any any better for us. And Comrade Carl, I just have this personal belief that if we really want to save, save the ANC, when we go to a national conference, and not only to save the ANC, also to address the issues about you. You know, for the last 110 years, the ANC is 110 years old. For the last 110 years, if you take the, 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 the leadership of the ANC and you put it on the wall there, you will find you'll find something wrong with it if you look at the leadership there. The 12, 13 men and the 13, 13 men. The 13 men president and the 13 male deputy presidents of the ANC. You mean in 110 years, the ANC could never produce, produce a woman leader to lead this organization? And I believe uh, that in this time, the ANC need a mother, motherly instinct. And I believe the time has arrived that we have a, a, a woman leader in the African National Congress. I'm very of the very strong view that we have to give the reins over to the to the to a, a female th this time around uh, to lead this organization. And I believe it, it will assist us also to address the issue about youth. Youth knows the youth know their mothers. The youth know how their mothers can take care of them. They know their mothers can listen to them. So I think it's the time has arrived. If we want to address the issue about youth in this country, if we want to address the issue about corruption, if we want to address all these issues, I believe the time has arrived that we need a credible woman to lead the African National Congress after 2024. That's my view, uh, that I believe that we need, the time has arrived for us to have a, a, free, a, a woman to lead this organization. And I think that we will we will improve. I think the electorate, the, the electorate will embrace that in 2024 that we have this woman leader that leads the, uh, the organization now. If we go into the next election with the current NEC, this ANC is going to lose power. We will never see power after 24. And once we lose it, we'll never gain it. So when we go with this current NEC into, into the next elections, the current setup, we're going to lose. There's no way we're going to win. Thank you, uh, Comrade Carl. Thank you, Comrade Mervyn. Well, my views are known. In Afrikaans, we say if we go into the next elections with President Ramaphosa and the current NEC, and I think, Mervyn, you will know what I say, we will be finished. We will stew in our own sauce. And if we go also into the next elections without stronger and in fact, truly believable and um, young people who have credibility as part of our leadership. And I agree with Comrade Sibusisu also as part of our top leadership. We need young people in the top six. We need more women. We need more young people in our top six, in our National Working Committee of the African National Congress. And we need to take seriously the challenge of unemployment, all the challenges around what Comrade Mervyn has described as this dark cloud that is hanging over the young people of our country and our country in general. And if we do not follow through on the implementation of a radical transformation of our economy, of again re-establishing our state-owned enterprises to the prime that they should have, 
and to the position of creating education, artisanship and skills on the one hand and on the other hand, job creation. If we want to undermine our state owned enterprises and simply break them up and dish them out to the white monopoly capitalist powers that be. South Africa is going to become one of the worst societies, even worse than what it is today. And the African National Congress will betray its historical duty and task of liberation of our people. And I fear that we will not only betray the young people of our country, we will betray the whole nation. And eventually, the young people as part of this nation, the largest part, in fact, of this nation, will turn on us. And when 2022 and 2024 comes, if we do not change, if we do not have a new leadership, if we do not have a new policy program, if we do not have a commitment which is lived out in practice for radical economic transformation, the African National Congress will lose power. It will become a minority party and we will be taken over by new liberal coalitions, which will not improve the lives of everyone. In fact, it will make everything worse. So comrades, I'm winding up by saying this is the watershed year for the African National Congress. Either we're going to change Either we're going to empower our youth, either we're going to do all of those things, or the ANC will die in our hands. I've got the hope that as much as we feel despondent today, as much as we say the sacrifices that young people made uh, 60, 46 years ago on the 16th of June 1976, are not seen and are not lived up to right now. I hope that next year when we have a similar conversation, we'll be able to have more hope and we will be able to have a different future looking us in the face. But that's going to depend on what happens in the next six months, how the ANC self-corrects and what leadership the ANC elects at our 55th National Conference, which is coming up in December this year. With those words, I want to sign off and I thank Comrade Mervyn Dirks, a member of parliament, long-standing activist, someone who's known for his courage, and also Comrade Spoum Kize from the Moses Mabida region, part of the regional task team of the ANC Youth League, Comrade Spu, your insights were invaluable. And as an older man, as an older comrade in the ANC, I can only say to you that I hang my head in shame that we have failed you as young people as much as we did. I also greet those other comrades who were meant to be with us, especially Comrade Penrol Maduna, the Youth League spokesperson of Johannesburg, who unfortunately was cut out of this conversation because of the perpetual data problems that we have in South Africa. Well, although it is difficult, let me still wish you, despite all our problems, for the rest of this day, a happy youth day, but especially a youth day of commitment of looking forward how we can change our society. It remains a luta. Continua. It's bomb was got cut in house. It's bomb was got cut in house. Bangazi. In your name, Tope Kwanjengelanda, a Pulama Pua Zamazamun Saba. In Kanyamba. In the Zelepezu and Yaras Paga Paga. 
ushawe wa chono polit kepita lila ngalishisa Baba lego nga wakule zise nkulba uka shafazo ita wazoni na Himta ndela petu mahashula gana kala Umpa ngazita Himta ndela petu fifa nga malala Umpa ngazita Himta ndela petu mnoto no mslaba ufinyelele zande zabantaba mnyama Umtope kwa unda bezita Himta nde ngokutusa nukutaza Irradical economic transformation wanga chigibala Kal ni hausu mafele mpinja nge soja Umagate bona E holi butole skonga Amazga atlama punuban chulula ya balega maembona Umbula 